welcome to part two. We have with us today Sorenza Small, well-known guitarist, composer, educator, and promoter. So, Sorenzi, I gather you went to a very famous boys' school. Can you tell us about that? I went to Jamaica College. Ah. And um, you know that there is a strong connection between St. I know it very well. I know the connection extremely well. Um, I was a member of the JC St. Andrew Drama Club. Ah. And um, I, was, I used to come here every Wednesday or Thursday, I don't know. And uh, we did um, lots of productions here, and I rehearsed in the hall. Um, it, and that was a, an amazing experience. Um, it's hard not to love uh, Andrew, <laughs> Andrew you know, for sure. You know, I mean, and I'm from the time of Dave and stuff. So I don't know, they still have that? Dave and Son. Um, well, true. back in the day, you know, we had Dave and um, we had to go to St. Andrew's Street, Dave and um, Matthew, Dave and so on. Barbie and that was our yeah. chance to, to kind of do the mm -hmm. boy girl mm -hmm. thing and profile and so on. I'm not a macho guy, I've never been a macho guy. I've more been a uh, nerd slash intellectually or pseudo intellectual kind of person. And so um, my, my, my connection with St. Andrews has always been um, through the, the, the cultural um, experience, the, the, the dramatic one. And um, I've always thought that St. Andrews girls were more grounded than the, you know, the other girls. Um, grounded and uh, they have a, 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 it's not a braggadocio, but they have a, a way. It's a, it's a confidence, but it's not just a confidence because other schools have confidence. There's no doubt about it. The one I can think of that has a lot of confidence. <laughs> but they have a, you believe they make good team players. You know, when you have an Andrew girl with you, you know, and they, and they, they, they support you, you know, you, you're getting real support, you know, rather than mere leadership or dominance. There are some schools that are like, well, you know, we are, we are amazing, and we are top, top, and you know, but they're not necessarily um, good team players. And I was like, that was Andrews. And I had a girlfriend in Madrid, and I was at um, JC. So we go back to that story about the, becoming a musician because you've toured all over the world with some very distinguished artists. Yes. I'd love to hear more about that. Um, I, I moved from Excel and I went to school of music after that, that moment that we were discussing. Your epiphany. Right. And then at school of music, I left school of music and went to the hotel circuit. And I played in a resident band for um, a few years, I think two or three years. Um, a music director, a range of guitarists, you know, rock and roll, and calypso, and the whole thing, jazz. The beauty of hotel work is that you get to do everything. And you get to do it, but well, back in the 80s when I was doing it, you, know, you had to do it to the high level. Um, we, we were in a hotel where you'd be 40 to visit, and people from Santana's band, and on, like, on a regular basis. And so, it, I mean, it's we were in the grill, and the grill, everybody came to the grill. All the top people came to the grill, all the musicians, all the hot musicians. So it was great. Um, and after that, I had another personal experience, and I became a member of a church. And I was a musical director, um, music minister for a church for many years. Okay. I, I was a world of life minister for a church. It was a charismatic mm -hmm. church. And so I got a full run of running conferences, praise and worship, prophetic song, speaking in tongues, laying out of hands. I was a prophet myself. I used to, you know, prophesy for the knowledge and all that. It was a big excitement. And then, so I had that run of, of, of looking at liturgy from different points, because I created a, a business called The Music Course out of that, which was to train churches. Um, and so I used to go around the island and train churches. I trained Moravian churches, I trained Pentecostal churches, and so on. When I you say train them, what do you mean? I went down once a week and taught them. Taught them music? Taught them praise and worship, taught them music from the scriptures, I taught them the principles of worship and leading and that kind of organizing service. Taught them piano, guitar, bass, drums, harmony, um, arrangement, um, 
vocal arrangement, uh, vocal, vocal technique, anything that they needed to run a music industry. And I did that for many years. Um, and that has had a massive impact on my understanding of Jamaica. Because when you travel around the island and you're with the people who make up the most of Jamaica, which is fundamentalist Christians, right, who are just working out there, just doing you know, their teachers, their farmers, their, and you know, they have aspirations. And I got convinced that Jamaica is incredibly noble. That the average Jamaican is a noble human being. You know, and what we consider the stereotype of the Jamaican, you know, what we do, you know, we have these images of reggae and rasta and you know, dance all and so on. That's not um, the heart of what it means to be Jamaican, these brand images. You know, there's another individual that doesn't get any press, and they're the ones who fix the, the basic school and they're working hard and they're, they're taking care of people's children. It's just constant mobility in Jamaica, it's just phenomenal. But it, I digress. Um, <coughs> it's an important I, point. But, but after that, um, I, when I was in the church, the church did not look favorably on me as a musician. And I also got married at that time. And so I worked, while I was working in the church as a musician, I also worked at um, traditional jobs. Um, so I was uh, back at Jamaica. Um, I went to there as a leaf clerk. I had computer skills. This is long before windows and those things, right? So I could do basic programming and I knew how to use a mainframe and all that. And so I worked at Bank of Jamaica for a couple of times and um, I had a life as a group life in underwriter and all of that. And then, um, and then I, I got back into music more full time by going back to school and doing the diploma in music education. And uh, with my experience now in teaching in the church and my experience in pop, um, we didn't really have a jazz scene in the 80s because the jazz scene at that time was just Sonny Bradshaw okay. for the most part. And then you had uh, Mutual Life Jazz a little bit, which was struggling with Cedric and Books and the various manifestations thereof. Um, I had a concern um, in all my experiences in the hotels, in, in the church, and so on, of training. And I went and did my diploma in music education and I studied the history and the methodology of training pop musicians. Um, I looked at a span of a, um, data of 10 years from the formation of the school to, uh, well, 10 years span, and surveyed 200 students, um, their experiences and you know, the information and so on. And I came up with some concepts that have become the basis of my work since then. Um, I, I taught at the, at the Jamaica School of Music, and I also was the head of the music program at Excel. I went back to Excel, I offered them an, a program that I had developed based on my research, which was <coughs> how to teach an improvisation, because I'm a, a, a jazz musician mm -hmm. at heart because of my experience mm -hmm. uh, with my mom. Um, and I had gone to Berkeley for a short time in the summer, um, played on the street and bust and, you know, on the subway and that kind of thing and um, studied at Berkeley and came back with all of these things. And the diploma that I was doing, the experience at Berkeley, and all the church experiences, and hotel experiences. And I created a course um, teaching improvisation from a Jamaican point of view, using Jamaican modalities, using fun, traditional music, reggae, and so on. And um, that became the basis for me doing shows, threats and friends, to flesh out those concepts. Um, I created the Jammers Network, which we did at the, the Hilton um, for many years, every third Wednesday for a couple of years. And then out of that came um, all the other things. Now, Real Music, I developed a company, Real Music, which was about uh, publishing and developing this live music um, approach. Because to me, live music was the best way to uh, flesh out these concepts, these training concepts. Um, and you know, this has led to everything that I've done to this point, which is the global battle of the band, sending people abroad to compete in that international competition and so on and so on. So that was in the sort of 90s, was that? Um, yes, 90s to 2000. Right. Yeah, 2000. And I know that in 1998 you were awarded the Excellence um, the J Jamaica Federation of Women of Musicians Award for Excellence. 
1998, and the best new jazz artist. You got that award as well. So, yeah. have you written uh, written down any of these methodologies that you've developed? Oh uh, um, yeah, yes. The, uh, it's available in print. Um, the one, well, the one I developed for Excel, where we, it was a full, fully fleshed out course yeah. with, um, you know, repertoire and philosophy. And, you know, so that is that plan. is available to the John public? No, no, not as yet. Um, I've been focus so much on the infrastructure yeah. issues mm -hmm. um, because music and music education does not exist well, outside why, of why. society and outside of um, our norms and our, our discussion or lack thereof. Right. And so um, I've been really busy you know, being a part of the discussion, mm -hmm. being you know, on several boards, you know, music industry boards and you know, structuring events and programs um, to move us forward or to facilitate that. And this most recent effort, the school, uh, funnily enough, is the thing that I've always wanted to do. Well, we're going to finish this segment and the next segment I'd like you just to tell us a little about your future plans, apart from some other lighter stuff that we want to cover. Okay.